Thanks. Welcome, Linda. Um, she's probably going to punch me later, but might. <laughs> you might. I know. Well, how about ten minutes? Just, just share. You know, if you would share where you came from, and then some of the things that you've gone through, and then, the, and then a couple of the miracles that you had when you went out and prayed, I think it would be awesome. Okay. I'm really bad at talking, and a lot of people like this. So I'm from, huh? <laughs> so I'm from Indonesia. I just want to give you a little bit background of how I grew up. Um, so in Indonesia, that um, everyone has to have a religion, even it shows in our ID card. And when I was when I was growing up, there were five religion that is approved. Uh, so we just have to pick one of them to worship or to believe. So uh, in high school, I went to a public high school. So in a public high school that everyone, every student, have to pick a religion to study. And because I came from a Chinese background and my mom has an offering altar, you know, to, to worship. So I just book, uh, I just pick uh, Buddhism. So yes, I was a Buddhist until almost eight years ago when the life started to change. Um, so eight years ago, uh, my family and I, we live in Ghana, in West Africa, and we live in this small community in the jungle, in the middle of nowhere. So pretty much the people that we meet every day is the same people. So one day, um, I had a friend. And the friendship, um, yeah, it just, there was a misunderstanding. And finally, she said that you're no longer my friend. So it really, it really took me to like, uh, depression. I felt lonely. I felt rejected. I felt like nobody was my friend. And Timothy, my son, was just a little baby then. And one morning, um, I just took him on a stroller and just walk around the compound. And I decided to stop by to this one lady. And she's a Christian. And um, I just stopped by to her house and have a coffee with her. And then she looked at me and she said, you look so sad. What's wrong with you? And I said, so I told her what's going on. And, and then she started sharing with me about Jesus and how, um, how she gave her life to Jesus. And then she asked me, do you want to receive Jesus now? And I said, no, because I felt like, I, do, I did not want to betray my faith in Buddha. So, and she said, it's okay. She just loves on me. And she said that when you feel lonely, go to your room, shut the door, lock it, and ask Jesus to come to you, and he will come to you. And that's what I did. And I locked my door. I just cry out. I said, Jesus, if you're, you know, just come. And I just felt that presence of God. I just felt so much peace. But I still haven't given him my life to him. But I knew that now that he's been, he's been working in my heart since then. Because not too long after that, we decided that we moved back to the States. And, and yeah, um, I asked my friend who I was, um, I guess that, uh, that I friend that I had problem with, I asked her for forgiveness. And yeah, and she said that she forgive me. And, um, and before I left, my, my friend Carmen, who shared Jesus with me, gave me this book called The Message. I did not know it was a Bible. And so she showed me where to read when I was, when I'm ready, she said that when you're ready to read this book, this is where you start to read. I said, okay. So I brought that book with me 
when we moved back to the States and with us, there was a couple that moved with us from, from Ghana. And the interesting is, I only heard this lady's name, the wife, when we live in Indonesia. I only saw her once. When we moved to Ghana, and we, uh, you know, just acquaintance, just like say hi, bye, and stuff. But now, they moved with us to Arizona. God has a plan. And so, because uh, our husbands work in the same company, so the company put us into the same apartment build, uh, apartment complex until we could find our own house. So, so we hang out a lot. And one day, we went, for, we went to a store, and she started sharing with me about how Jesus healed her from breast cancer, fully healed. And I was like, wow, I want to know who this Jesus is. And I, I went home. I looked for my message. I couldn't find it. And when my husband came home from work, and I said, where's my book? Which book? I said, the message. And he said, the Bible? And I said, is that a Bible? I don't know. It's a Bible. The only Bible I know is the one that in the hotel room that say Holy Bible. That's the only Bible I know. And I never know there is so many versions of Bible. And yeah, I start reading it. And I just felt my eyes just open for the first time. Because when I read the word, it was the book of John. When I read the word of God, I just felt like, oh my gosh, this is so true. This is so true. This is so true. It just felt like a life to me. And I couldn't remember, but I know the date, November 19, 2014. I went to knock on Susie's, my friend Susie's door. I said, can you pray with me to receive Jesus? That's when my life started to change because Jesus came into my life. And I just love how people sharing about their story with Jesus to others, especially those who do not believe yet. Because in my experience, there is power in our testimony. And everyone has a story to tell. Because Jesus creates a story with every individual differently like a fingerprint. And yeah, and two weeks later after that, I received the baptism of Holy Spirit. I speak in tongue and stuff because, and I started reading. I couldn't stop reading the Bible because every word just came to real to me. I finished the book of John. I started to go back to the book of Matthew and then just run. I just read and I just couldn't stop because it's just like, you know, when you're hungry, you just want to eat and eat and eat and couldn't stop eating. And that's how I felt. So, yeah. And we were, and before I met Jesus, before I gave my life to Jesus, I was so insecure in my marriage. But when after I, after I received Jesus into my life, I just felt like he changed my marriage completely. I think because he gave me a new eyes to see my marriage and I know then it's just like God really alive because you know I've been a Buddhist before I've been in a different side of fence I know Jesus is a living God Amen. because he is so yeah that's my testimony excellent Excellent. I want you to share about the lady at Walmart. Okay. Okay. I have to hurry. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, we just moved back to Casper from Yuma, and, and that morning, it was Sunday, and I skipped church. So I went to Walmart instead with my <laughs> boys. Now, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I saw, um, I saw the lady, the greeter in the West Walmart. He was in, she was in wheelchair. And I felt the, the Lord says to me, why don't you pray for her? 
and I was just going around and around, and I and I was done shopping. I went out, and I still, and she's still there. And I saw so I came stop by to see her and says, "Hey, what's wrong with your leg?" So she started sharing with me a little bit, and then I just talked to her, and then she said, "Well, honey, if you just pray, just pray for me." And I said, "Okay, actually, can I pray for you now?" And then she said, "Yeah, sure." So yeah, I prayed, and I was like, people just coming in and out, you know, just like, okay. And then she kept like saying, "Oh my God, I can feel it! I can feel it!" And I was just like, "Okay, you better go. Bye, see you." <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then I left. And then two weeks later, I went to Walmart again, and then I didn't see her first. She saw me first, and she said, "Is that you who prayed for me two weeks ago?" And I said, "Yeah, how are you doing?" She stood up. And start bending and start jumping or whatever, and I said, "Wow, Jesus heal you!" And he, he said, "Yeah," and and then we were just like, you know, happy. And then she said, "Do you know that is a camera out there? People really can see that we are doing this." I said, "I don't really care. Everybody needs to know <laughs> Jesus." <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, see God heal and. So she went after I prayed for her, and she said, she, "Well, she told me that day after I prayed for her, she went back to uh, she went to her doctor. She was already scheduled for back surgery, and the doctor said, "I do not know where your strength come from, but you don't need surgery anymore." Amen. So the Lord healed her. Okay. Do you guys want to hear one more story? Tell us about the broken arm, the little boy. Oh, the little girl next door. Oh, the little girl. Okay. Yeah, so, so they were our neighbors, and um, so I got a text from her mom saying, hey, can you watch out my son because I had to take my girl to the emergency room because he just broke her arm. And I said, oh, okay. So midnight, her dad picked her up, uh, his dad picked him up, and then he showed me the x-rays of the arm. And, uh, oh, wow, that looked like broken. Like, you can see that it's, like, twist like that. And so, and then, see, and then he told me that they're going to take the, the girls to Denver tomorrow after work. So when I pick up my sons from school, I just felt the Lord says, why don't you just stop by and pray for her? I said, well, they don't believe. You know, and just like, but okay. So I got home, and I was just like, knock on the door, say, hey, do you mind if I pray for, for her, for, the, the, uh, for your daughter? And she said, sure. So yeah, I prayed for her. And then they went to Denver. And then the next morning, I got a text from her mom and says, you won't believe this. They took another x-ray. Now fin uh, Finley doesn't need to have surgery anymore because they are so much different than the x-ray they took yesterday and this morning. So she just need to put the brace, for like the sling, whatever. Yeah, the sling. Yeah, for 30 days or, so, or three months or something like that. But she doesn't need, she didn't need surgery. Amen. So. So you, so you don't know who's sitting next to you, do you? So Linda's telling these stories one night late cause, because what we do, a lot of you guys leave early, and that's fine, but we kind of hang out in here and drink coffee and talk till late. And uh, she started telling these stories. I'm like, man, get your hands on me right now. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? But you notice what happened in both cases? God told her to go pray for the lady at Walmart. God told her to go pray for the little girl, and when she did it, now God's obligated to show up. See, because if he tells you to do something, now he's obligated to show up. It's not your idea. It's